Hello everyone, welcome to Kids for Code. Today we'll be learning about while loops. All right, so what are loops? Let's say I wanted to print out hello three times. How do we do this? So the obvious answer is print hello, print hello, print hello. What if we wanted to do that a hundred times? Do we have to write the same thing over and over and over and over again? Loops let us execute the same code over and over until the condition is broken or false. That way we don't have to print hello a hundred times. A while loop is a kind of loop that keeps on going while a condition is true. It's kind of like a repeating if statement that starts over again if it's true instead of just running it. For example, while a bathtub is not full, keep filling it with water. So if bathtub is not full, we add more water. If bathtub is still not full, we add more water. If bathtub is still not full, we add even more water. And then when bathtub is full, we don't add any more water. This bathtub is not full is now false. Let's try the bathtub example. So we'll say first how full our bathtub can get. We'll say it's when the height of the water is five. All right, now let's say where our bathtub is right now. Our bathtub now is at zero. There's no water in it. All right, so while, bathtub now is less than the full bathtub. I'm going to add water by adding one to it, and plus equals one. All right, so then we can print out at the end uh, how much water we have. You can see it's five. We can see how we got there also. Let's try this again. As right, so you can see, we start out, first we're zero, then we add one, so there's one. We go to two, because one was less than five. We go to three, because two was less than five. We go to four, and then five. And try to win the while loop again, bathtub now is five, and full bathtub is also five. So since five is not less than five, we stop doing the while loop. So while loop steps. Step one, we check the condition, just like the if statement. If it is true, and only if it is true, in step two, we run our code. Step three, we go back to the condition and check if it's true. In step four, we repeat this until the condition is false. All right, let's look at an example. We're going to count from one to 10. So we're gonna say our counter is one, while the counter is less than or equal to 10, print counter value, counter, counter plus equals one. So you have to go to a value where the condition will eventually be false. Otherwise, you're going to go into an infinite loop and it just keeps on going over and over and over again and will never stop. In this example, the loop's condition depends on the counter variable. This counter is right in here. We're increasing counter by one every iteration so the counter will eventually be 11. This makes this condition false because 11 is not less than or equal to 10, and the loop will stop. If we didn't have counter plus equals one, the loop would never end and we have an infinite loop. We do not want this. Let's look at the counter example. So remember, the counter starts at one, and the loop while the counter is less than or equal to 10. Let's try running it. Let's see what happens. The first counter value we get is one. Because we run this, counter one is less than or equal to 10, we print out the value and we add one. Next the value is two, because one was less than 10. Sorry, because two is less than 10. So we print it out two and we added one. Now it's three. Let's so print out three because three is less than 10. And four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, until we get all the way up to 10. 10 is still less than or equal to 10, so we print out 10, and then we add 1 to the counter to make it 11. But now, 11 is not less than or equal to 10, so we end the while loop, which brings us to the end of the program. Let's make a simple game. It's called the waiting game. All right, we're going to keep track of the number of rounds the player has played. Let's start it at zero, because we haven't played anything yet. We're also going to get input from the user. 
I'm going to ask if they want to play another round and ask them as a yes or no question. Say either answer Y or N. If they answer yes, meaning they want to keep on playing, we're going to keep on looping through this. We're going to add a round and tell them how many rounds they've played for. Let's test it out and see how it works. You want to play another round? We'll say yes. I played for one round. You want to play for another round? Of course I do. And I've played for two rounds. Do you want to play another round? Sure, I do. Do you want to play another round? I'm tired of waiting, so I'll say no. And there, it ended. Because this became false. My input was not Y. When my input was Y, kept on going and running this code over and over and over again. That's how Y loop works. Let's look at the summary questions. One. What do we use loops for, and why do we use them? Question two, why do we need to make sure to change the condition variable when looping? You can answer these on your own for now, and we'll go over them next class.